Chapter 20, the newborn at risk, gestational and acquired disorders. Okay, so the newborn at risk, there's about 10% of infants that are born ill or develop health problems shortly after birth. These infants will typically go to the NICU. Uh, LVNs can often work in level two NICUs, um, and so you'll be assisting at that stage if you choose that path. Variations in size and gestational age. A majority of newborns are gonna be born around 40 weeks gestation, weighing an average from anywhere from five to 5.5 pounds to 10 pounds and measuring 18 inches to 23 inches in length. Variations in birth size and gestational age can increase the newborn's risk for perinatal problems. So the way we classify it is SGA, small for gestational age, this means that the weight, length, and head circumference fall below the 10th percentile for gestational age. Appropriate for gestational age is that they, the weight, length, and head circumference will fall between the 10th and 90th percentile for gestational age. And then of course, large for gestational age is gonna be 90th percentile. So three classifications that describe a newborn size based on weight. You can have low birth weight, which is going to be weight less than 2,500 grams, a very low birth weight, weight less than 1,500 grams, or an extremely low birth weight, weight less than 1,000 grams, and those are often our micro preemie babies. Newborn classifications based on gestational age includes preterm or premature, born at less than 36, I'm sorry, 37 weeks gestation, post-term or post-mature, which is born at more than 42 weeks gestation, and then our term babies are considered between 37 and 42 weeks gestation. So how do we evaluate what their gestational age is? Sometimes in the doctor's office, we'll do ultrasounds or we'll do their estimated due date, but we're not always accurate. So when the baby actually comes out, we will do this thing called the Ballard Scoring System. And if you click on this link right here, you'll, it'll go to a video and you'll be able to see Ms. Sphere, our clinical instructor, do a Ballard score on a baby. Evaluation of two main categories of maturity come from neuromuscular and physical maturity. So that is what we're looking at when we do a Ballard score. You'll see neuromuscular maturity is dealing with their posture, whether they're up tight and tense, a square window measuring the wrist angle and flexion toward the forearm until resistance is met, it's arm recoil, popliteal angle, bringing your foot all the way up to your head, a scarf sign pulling your arm across your chest, and then heel to ear, seeing if you're heel can actually go all the way to your um, head. Of course, I can't demonstrate that one for you. And then there's physical maturity, and this is looking at their skin, the lonego, which is the hair, or the tuft on them, hair tuffy, fuzzy peach fuzz, whatever you want to call that, plantar creases, how many creases are actually on their feet, breast buds, whether it, there's a thickness to them or if they feel completely fat flat, ears and genitals. And so on this chart, you need to know where uh, premature is and what postmature is and to be able to describe that for Intrauterine growth restriction. This occurs when the fetus doesn't receive adequate amounts of oxygen and nutrients. For whatever reason, it's not allowed to grow that environment, that womb is not allowing that baby to grow the way that it needs to. It can begin at any time during the pregnancy, and there's many contributing factors, which could be inadequate maternal nutrition, the mom just isn't eating what she needs to, she might be taking in drugs or something else, but she isn't getting the nutrients that that baby needs. Abnormality in the placenta or its function, it could be placenta abruption, maternal smoking, or fetal inner uterine infection. Clinical manifestations of intrauterine growth restriction are either symmetrical growth restriction, meaning 
everything is symmetrical, both the head and the body parts are in proportion, this is going to be more serious because you think about a baby and that head should be larger. It's often a genetic cause and the condition is generally chronic. Asymmetrical growth restriction is the second classification and this is where the head is large in comparison to the body. And so you can see a picture of here where you have a normal baby, normal head, and then um, symmetrical, you have the small head, small abdomen, and asymmetrical, you have a large normal size head, but you have a small abdomen. The small for gestational age um, growth restricted newborn. Uh, typically, they appear very pale, thin, wasted, just very sick looking babies. Their skin is loose, it's peeling, the face is shrunken, has this just real, I can't do it, appearance, but they just look sick. They look like they're not getting any nutrients. And then uh, your skull, your sutures, uh, abdomen is often sunken in. Intrauterine growth restriction newborn may have neurological involvement and that's gonna involve a shrill cry. Remember anytime we talk about a baby having a shrill cry, we're always thinking neurological. What's going on with that baby? Neurological. They'll often have a wide-eyed expression, just hyper alert. They can often appear irritable, jittery, difficult to soothe. They have an exaggerated moral reflex. And remember, moral is that startle reflex. So you startle them and it just, it's very um, exaggerated, intense. They can have difficulty leaping and then they'll also startle easily. So you'll get them to sleep, but then they'll wake up real quick. Complications often can be um, aspiration of amniotic fluid and then meconium aspiration syndrome. If that baby has a meconium stool, um, they can take that in. It increases risk for cesarean delivery because of fetal distress, they have difficulty with thermoregulation, and then polycythemia, that's the red blood cells, excess red blood cells. Nursing care, the RN is going to be responsible for assessing gestational age, identifying potential complications, and initiating that plan of care. You as the LBN or the LPN, you'll play an important role in carrying out the interventions identified in the plan of care. So be alert for any potential complications, risk factors related to respiratory distress, hypothermia, hypoglycemia, polycythemia, and altered parental interaction between the newborn. These are things that we are watching out for and making sure that um, we're not headed in the wrong direction. Large for gestational age newborn, the newborn's overall body size is proportional, but both the head and the weight fall in the upper limits of the growth charts. So they're above 90 percentile in the growth charts. Most are genetically and nutri nutritionally adequate. Um, often big babies, you look at the genetics and the parents are also big as well. Sometimes size can be misleading in this. Um, they look healthy, but they're not always the healthiest babies. So we have to be real careful not to just jump to conclusions and think these are healthy babies. Contributing factors, it can be maternal diabetes. They're always gonna have big babies, that extra glucose. Genetic makeup, obesity, and multiparity. Congenital disorders, beckwith windrum syndrome, uh, transposition of the great vessels. We talked about this when we talked about congenital heart defects. It's the uh, aorta going to the right ventricle, ventricular and the right or the left ventricular going into the pulmonary arteries. It's backwards of what it should be. Umbilical abnormal and normalities, hypoglycemia, hyperinsulinemia of the newborn, any of those things can cause a large for gestational age newborn. Some of the complications, more than twice as likely to deliver by cesarean section, leading cause of breech presentation and shoulder dystocia, fractured skull or clavicles, cervical or brachial plexus injury, and then herb palsy, that is when the face has um, some nerve damage done to it. 
Nursing care will assist the RN to perform a gestational age assessment, will conduct and document routine nursing care. Okay, so now we're talking about the preterm baby. So needs and cares differ with the level of prematurity. So what, what kind of baby are we dealing with exactly with our premature baby? You can have micro preemies, which are the tiniest newborns weighing less than a thousand grams. You can almost hold that in your hand. You can actually hold that in your hand. They're just teeny tiny. You have late preterm newborns, which are born between 34 and 37 weeks gestation. And determining the gestation age of a preterm newborn is crucial. That is when we're going to do that Ballard, we're going to figure out um, how long that baby has been in utero, his gestational age. Transportation of the newborn may be necessary. Oftentimes, if it's in outer hospitals that don't have a NICU, we will send our NICU nur nurses to go get that baby via ambulance or um, Lifestar, whichever way we have to get it. Remember with the preterm babies, we said that 24 weeks gestation is the earliest that a baby can be born and have fairly relatively good chance of survival. So some of the contributing factors for a preterm newborn, the number of preterm births is actually on the rise. And we talked about the reason for this is that um, fertility treatments are actually uh, better than they ever have been. And so people who used to cannot have babies are doing fertility treatments and they're having multiple babies. Um, polyhydraminos to excess amount of amniotic fluid, a larger amount of amniotic fluid, um, larger than average inner uterine mass, early cervical dilation, all of these can be contributing factors to preterm newborn. Uh, we talked about preterm premature rupture of membranes, that water breaks too early, and then increased numbers of pregnant women with diabetes as well. So here's a picture of a preterm baby. You can see how tiny they are, just a micro preemie. Often characteristics of a preterm newborn are, is that that infant is just going to be tiny, scrawny, and red. Extremities are real thin, the skin is transparent, you can almost see all the vessels, the veins, the arteries. Head and abdomen are disproportionately large. Testes are going to be undescended in the male, and then in the female, the labia ma major will um, be less prominent than the uh, labia minor, you'll see where it, the folds do not cover over. And then many of the typical newborn reflexes are going to be weak um, or completely absent. You won't see the sucking reflex, the rooting reflex, things like that. Characteristics of the preterm newborn also include physiological immaturity, which can cause many difficulties involving virtually all of the body systems. Most critical, of course, is going to be the respiratory system. That's why we'll give a shot of surfactant to some uh, premature babies, hoping that we can help develop their lungs. Uh, if we had premature rupture of membranes, we give them, remember, the steroids to help develop their lungs a little bit better. Thermoregulation and maintaining fluid and electrolyte balance. Remember, thermoregulation is going to be huge. They have more skin surface than they do muscle fat tissues, um, fat tissues and muscle, which generates heat. So thermoregulation is huge. We've got to get a hat on them. We've got to keep them warm. Make sure their body temperature is 97.7 and above. Um, if it's not, then we're going to put them under the radiator, the heater and get them warmed up. We're going to keep them wrapped up, keep them in that tight flex position. With preterm pre babies, they often don't have that real tight flex position, and so we have to help them with that by swaddling them. They'll have high caloric needs, however, their digestive system is not always prepared to receive and digest food. Uh, remember, they have about 22 to 24 calories per ounce versus a baby who has 20 calories per ounce. They're vulnerable to infection, they have mu muscle weakness. Um, for the preterm newborn, there are a couple of complications and I want you to study through these, go through these. You have RDS, which is respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, it's where that um, alveoli collapse on each other and 
because of that, they don't usually for your ABLI, for my ABLI, we have surfactant in there and it keeps those ABLIs expanded. For these babies, they completely collapse and you can obviously see where that is going to be more work to